What's poppin' guys, it is your boy Ashley, here today with our MPL Week 1. So, we are playing Tyler, aka Phantom Bass, Phantom Bass, I'm actually not sure. Um, he's a friend of mine, he is a Doc Wizard, and a great battler. So, while I'm excited for this match, because it's excited to get into these battles, I'm also very nervous. He is rocking a team of Mew, Infernape, Mega Aerodactyl, Empoleon, Florges, Dragouge, Hippowdon, Stoutlin, Decidueye, Electivire, Alolan Persian, and Shelmet. So, I thought that I would just bring a slower team because this team is very fast. So, as you can see, we have our Trick Room, Cofagrius to start things off. Trick Room, Shadow Ball, Hidden Power Fighting, and Nasty Plot with the leftovers. That's going to allow me to hit pretty much everything on his team and those defensive EVs are going to allow me to live some key hits from things such as Mega Aerodactyl. We also have Discord Orb or Gliscor because it's toxic as hell. Uh, it's got Knock Off, Earthquake, Roost, and U-Turn. Knock Off just to force, whenever I force these twitches with this thing, I'll be able to just knock off those items. Everyone knows how Knock Off works. Earthquake for Stab, Roost, and U-Turn to get a little bit of momentum. I've got a lot of things in this match that are a little bit fragile, so I really thought having that momentum would be nice. We also have JR Swish, our Hoopa Unbound. This is also a Trick Room Pokemon. Trick Room, Zen Headbutt, Drain Punch, and Hyperspace Fury with the Darkinium Z. Now, I went with the Zen Headbutt because it helps me with Infernape. It helps me with the Dragouge, and it helps me against the Florges. If he is rock, if he brought, if he brings the Florges, and it has the Poison Reducing Berry, Gunk Shot would still be a two-hit KO, just as much as Zen Headbutt would. And Zen Headbutt has that flinch chance as well. So I opted for Zen Headbutt over Gunk Shot this week, even in the face of that Florges. We also have Smash Mouth or Stormy because it is an all-star uh, choice scarf with Analytic, Hydro Pump, Psy Shock, Ice Beam, and Thunderbolt. This thing can two-hit KO every single thing on his team if i predict it correctly on the switch and my plan is to lead stormy and reveal that i am choice scarf because that is going to force more switches than him thinking he might outspeed me and things like that so i want him to know from the very jump that i am choice scarf stormy because if i throw off a hydro pump and he goes into that floor he's going to be doing 50 percent so that is really really nice just that damage all around we also have our Rotom Heat here with the Charty Berry, Thunderbolt, Overheat, Volt Switch, and Will-O-Wisp. This Charty Berry is to allow me to live a hit from this Aerodactyl and get a Will-O-Wisp off. Will-O-Wisp also comes in handy against possibly the Decidueye, um, even though I can obviously just overheat the Decidueye. If I'm in a position where I have overheated and he brings it in and I'm not going to be able to knock it out, I don't feel like there's a lot he would be able to do to me, so I could always Will-O-Wisp him. Um, in that scenario, especially since I do outspeed with my speed investment. Finally, we have Cobalion. This is going to be Choppleberry, Iron Head, Close Combat, Stealth Rock, and Sword Stance. This is going to be outspeeding almost everything on his team that's not named Mega Aerodactyl. Um, I believe it even can outspeed possibly an Adamant Infernape. I can't remember, but I chose to go Choppleberry this week because just on his team, he doesn't have any... Uh, Pure fighting types, I don't think. I mean, he has Infernape, but he doesn't have any other ones. But he does have a lot of people that have that fighting coverage. And that was something that I was a little bit worried about. I did not want to be hit by a fighting move. The Akaberry would not be helping me that much anyway. So I decided to go Chopple because it would just help me live like a couple more, a couple different hits. Just seemed to have more utility. Stealth Rocks to ensure that I do get some rocks up and start getting that chip damage, as well as the Close Combat, Iron Hand, and Swords Dance, just for dealing damage all around. Now, the reason I flew through this team prep a little bit is because I live comped, and the live comp ended up going a lot longer than I thought it would. So, we're going to cut to that. Y'all enjoy. Alright, and here we are. Uh, first ever live comp. Pretty excited about it. All right. So, Shelmet concerns me a little bit. I feel like this Shelmet is going to be disrespectful to me. And it would not surprise me at all to get disrespected by a Shelmet. So, you know, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Hopefully, he is going to lead this Aerodactyl. If he leads Shelmet, I'm not exactly sure... <laughs> what I'm gonna do because I know passing is legal in this so actually if you lead show me I think I go straight to Cofagrius 
and just try and set up a trick room to be honest um, I feel like that's probably my best out of the options out of the options presented uh, I'm not really sure how to waste time in the middle of these post comps or in the middle of comps either so I guess I'll just talk about what he brought I definitely expected I, I really did not expect the Decidueye um, I definitely expected Hippo I expected Mega Aerodactyl and the Infernape. Obviously, I did not expect Shelma at all. But I know this thing can Curse Pass, which would be really bad uh, for a Trick Room setup. But we'll see, man. Again, uh, I'm not really sure what to do with that Shelma. I guess I could go Rotom. Let me calc that real quick. See what that looks like. We'll go to Shelma. We'll do at level 50. And yeah, it's holding the Eviolite. We'll go right here to our Rotom Heat. The three flame emoji boy. Yeah, so an overheat will kill if he is pretty much max HP, max spadef. So I don't think he has a way of boosting his special defense. I don't think so, at least. So that that'll be the play. If he leads Shelmet, I'll let him get up some spikes. And I'll just go straight into my Rotom Heat. Although, I am a little bit concerned, slightly concerned, that I do not have any hazard removal. That is something that I just now realized. And he is going to lead off with his... With his Empoleon. So, what do, I, what do I do about that? I actually... Dude, I hope this isn't a setup Empoleon because I really don't have much for it. I'll look up Empoleon. Oh, okay, so he could be Swords Dance Aqua Jet. I'm not sure. We'll just have to we'll just have to play it through and see. But I am gonna go ahead and go for the Thunderbolt on this first turn, and that's gonna do over half. That's really nice. He does go for the knockoff. I did not know Empoleon got knockoff, so that's obviously not ideal. But I'm just gonna T-bolt here again. If he wants to go Hippo, that's totally fine by me. Uh, I really don't mind at all. But if he stays in, that is going to allow me to KO this Empoleon. But that does give me, that that, that really does hurt losing the Choice Scarf. Because now I'm not going to be able to threaten that Aerodactyl nearly as well as I would have liked to, to be honest. So, that's a little bit of a rough situation. But we do have Gliscor as a nice little Aerodactyl switch in. And then we can U-turn out directly into Rotom. So, um... There's no way, obviously, he could live this this Thunderbolt. So, I think there is a good chance he goes Hippowdon. And if he does, that's fine by me. I don't really have anything else that's... Oh, he goes Decidueye. Okay. So, he has Leftovers Decidueye. So, that's going to mean he's a little bit on the bulkier side. That Thunderbolt did 19%. Um... Which is a little more than my calcs, to be honest. So, he must have zero spadef invested. Um, I'm not going to be able to take him out with an ice beam or anything like that. So, I do believe... See, I don't want him to be, to be swords dance. I think my best bet may just be to go into Cobalion here. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go Cobal here. Uh, especially just because I do believe that Cobal is probably my most expendable Mon that I have currently. So we'll see. He is going to Shadow Sneak. Okay, that's not bad. So this is a... Hmm. So what does he go into on this Cobalion? He might go Shelmet. He could go Infernape. But... I feel like I do like rocks. He does have probably Empoleon to get rid of the rocks, but that's just a turn to force him to defog. Um, Cobalion is going to be doing. Let me calc that Shadow Sneak real quick. Get a little bit more information while we while we're here. Why not? Shadow Sneak. So 13.9% to 16.7. He did 16.8, so I think he is adamant. Yeah, so that he got a really low roll adamant. Um, 
So, and Iron Head's going to do about 50 to this. Um, and I'm not sure what he would bring in on this. He might, he might go Infernape, right? Predicting the rocks. So, I could just go for an Iron Head here. I will outspeed, so I do have the possibility to flinch him. And that'll give me some nice chip off on the Infernate. But I think I do like I think I do like just getting rocks here. As he is going to stay in and go for the substitute. So that's obviously not ideal. I'm just gonna iron head here. Get rid of that. He's gonna SD. So honestly, I'm just gonna keep iron heading. Um, because he is gonna be a plus two now. But that does a shit ton of damage. And yeah, so that's Cobalion gone, basically, because um, he's going to Shadow Sneak here, because I am trapped and unable to switch. So that's definitely unfortunate, but what can you do? That's Them's are the breaks, man. Uh, he's going to Shadow Sneak and knock me out. Okay, so what is my best option here? Because I obviously can't go Stormy. Um, I'm going to go back to Decidueye. So he is Swords Dance. That is at least good to know. And I am going to go to my Rotom Heat and see if that is going to be able to... What that, what that, what that's going to take from a Shadow Sneak because that's mostly what I'm worried about. He is adamant. Um, I really wish I had gone for the Iron Head on that turn instead of the... Instead of the rocks. You hear me talking about it, so that's always nice. I guess that's one reason I like doing a, I, I could do a live com is just because typically I have decent ideas. I just never act on them. So, oh, he's still at level 100. So I'm going to turn it back to 50. Uh, Shadow Sneak's going to do about 50 to me, which really sucks. But, let's see. He is, what has he revealed so far? I really don't think I have another option, to be honest. I think he's going to do too much damage to my other Pokemon. And I can take out that Aerodactyl and Trick Room anyway, so I am just going to go straight here for the Overheat. Uh, he probably will be able to get a large chunk. He'll get enough damage off on me to where that Charty Berry is basically a useless spring. But uh, at this point, I really don't, I really don't have a choice. Um, there is, I guess, the possibility that I'm faster with my with my Go Score, but I don't think so. I don't have that much speed investment, so I don't know. Uh, Damn, I actually am one point faster as Gliscor, so. Uh, and I would have taken significantly less from a Shadow Sneak. So that, I definitely should have checked that before. But here we are. Hopefully, hopefully he just switches, honestly. I, I'm really just hoping that he wants to preserve this. Um, it does do a lot of work to my team. With that Shadow Sneak, is really going to help with the Stormy, which pressures a lot of his team, especially now that he knows that I do have the, the coverage. So hopefully he just goes Hippo here, because that's a fairly safe switch in to an Overheat. And nice, nice, nice. I'm totally fine with that, because that is going to save the health on my Rotom and allow me to potentially check a l uh, later on the, whatchamacallit, you know its name, the Decidueye, so, or the Aerodactyl. So I'm going to throw Hip out on into this little, into this little bad boy right here. And we're going to be able to see how much that overheat did um, based on the calcs. Uh, let's see, let's see. Okay, so overheat from my calcs is doing 47 to 55. So I'm going to bump down. He must not have any spadef investment. So that is really, really nice. Um, I feel like he might just go for the slack off here. So let me go ahead and check... Um, Let me check and see what an Earthquake would do to Stormy. Uh, an Earthquake would knock out Stormy. Um, but it would give me a free switch in to my, to my Cofagrius. I just don't know if that's exactly what I need right now. And he might have Whirlwind as well. So I could always just go Gliscor and get a knockoff on it. Or knockoff on something at least. Let me see what Gliscor is doing to this hippo. Um, so yeah, that's that's only doing 22%. Um, I feel like if I can get Starmie in safely, I obviously can't bolt switch on this hippo, but 
Let me see if I can land a Will-O-Wisp. What his Stone Edge would be would be doing to me if he was if he was packing Stone Edge. Um, I, although I do feel like he would just slack off here. It would pop my Charty, but it would be doing virtually zero damage. I don't know. I feel like going into Gliscor is probably my safest play. Um, it will allow me to knock off this Hippo's leftovers, which will definitely help in the long run. I would like to burn it, but this covers if he just decides to Earthquake. This covers his rocks. This covers his slack off. Yeah, okay, so that's not bad at all. I am. It also allows me to proc my Poison Heal, which is really, really nice. And I'm just going to knock here and get rid of these leftovers because I need them out of the way. Um, the rocks is fine. Uh, it does kind of suck, but it is what it is. Here, I am just going to go for the EQ, get a little bit of chip off. He's just going to slack off. That's fine with me. Um, I'm going to knock again. In case he wants to switch. I mean, he doesn't really have a reason to. But. We'll see. Stranger things have happened. Yeah. So, he just stays in. He's going to roar. That's perfectly fine with me. That's going to bring in Cofagrius. And. To be honest. Um, I do think that there is a chance. No, I, I'm, I underspeed this. A hundred times out of a hundred. So. I am not sure what to do here. I think he might try to switch. Let me see how much I'm doing to, to this hippo as Cofagrius. Because if I can do some decent damage. So Shadow Ball is doing 38. And he is only doing 26, 31. I, I, I kind of want a Nasty Plot here. Because if I can Nasty Plot, that would let me... Let's see. I'll be doing 63 to 75. I think I'm just going to Shadow Ball because I don't think he has any reason. I think he really wants to roar that Rotom Heat in. So I'm just going to go straight for the Shadow Ball here. And yeah, good call, good call. That's going to bring Gliscor back in. Uh, so here I think he slacks off. So I'm just going to U-turn and go out into my Stormy, to be honest. Because he doesn't, like, he does not really have a switch into Hydro Pump now. Yeah, perfect. All right, so now this is the perfect opportunity just to fire off a Hydro Pump because I am going to outspeed anything else. We get rid of the Hippo. And that is really, really nice for Rotom Heat. Even though we are going to be suffering due to the rocks, uh, we are going to be able to do a good bit of damage. So he is able to Shadow Sneak here. But I think I may just sack it because I'm not faster than anything else on his team. And I have ways to deal with Empoleon. So I'm just going to go for the Ice Beam in case he doesn't Shadow Sneak. Although he does obviously Shadow Sneak, so... Now, I believe this is a great time just to bring in. So he's got Sneak, Substitute, Sword Dance, and Spirit Shackle. So let me see how much he's doing to my Gliscor. Because I feel like I kind of have his set figured out at least. I know he's max attack. Sorry, I know he is max attack adamant. So if, if I can look at these calcs and see that he is not doing that much to Gliscor then I can just U-turn out. And I am going to be faster than him. Oh no, I can go for the knockoff. Because um, I am faster. If he wants to shadow sneak me, let's see how much that's going to do. Uh, that's going to be doing... Yeah, 12%. So I'm going to go Gliscor and I'm going to knock here. I feel like that's my that's my best play. Uh, because it, it, if it, it, it's... it's uh, sorry. No matter what he brings in... It's going to be it's going to be getting rid of something. And I don't think he stays into Shadow Sneak. Yeah, he is just going to go straight Aerodactyl and I'm going to be able to knock that off. So he is going to outspeed me. If he wants to go for the Ice Fang, that's fine. It's not going to knock me out. And I'm just going to be able to U-turn out. Okay, he's going to Rouge. That's fine with me. I am just going to U-turn out and I'm going to go into my Rotom Heat here and just fire off the Thunderbolt. Because if he's Rock Slide, I can definitely live this. If it's Stone Edge, um, it's a roll. But I do have that Charty Berry, so. And he may think I'm, I'm like Specs or something and just go for it. Or he may think I'm Double Scarfed because I did switch out after the last time. I don't. I want to give him enough credit to think that I wouldn't be Double Scarfed, but I also know how people perceive me. 
and I know <laughs> I know my the way I prep. So I feel like people when they play me, they're not surprised by anything. Like they'd be like, oh yeah, he would run, he would run double scarf. That would that would make a lot of sense to me. So it really does suck that we lost Stormy, but after the choice scarf went down, um, it's not as big of a deal in my opinion. It's not doing the same kind of work that it was. Still did put in a lot of work, but getting that free switch into the Gliss score was really nice. And being able to just U-turn right out into this is also fantastic. So we're gonna fire off the Thunderbolt and that is going to knock out his Decidueye. So that is really, really nice as well. I'm actually not sure what he goes to here. Um, possibly Infernape, but if Infernape wants to try and hit me with the Stone Edge, um, I'll be able to take that as well. And also, uh, just on top of that, I can go ahead and bounce right out into Gliscor. Although, if he were a, if he were a special set, that would be really bad and be able to HP Ice my Gliscor. But again, if he is a special set, okay, so he is just gonna go into Shelmet. So I think he probably thinks that I'm locked in, which is good. Because I do think that I'm able to KO this with my with my overheat. I think I'm easily able to OKO this with my overheat. Yeah, it's gonna be doing 95 to 115. So as long as I can hit this, we'll be good. He may protect a scout to see if I'm choiced. If he has protect, um, but he doesn't, and we were able to knock out the Shelmet. That is really, really nice. I'm glad that I played. I'm glad I didn't go for the Will O Wisp on the Decidueye earlier because that would not have been possible. He would not have known. He would have known for sure that I wasn't locked in. So now he is just going to go here into the Aerodactyl. And honestly, I think I may just Will O Wisp here. Um, I think that would be really, really nice because I obviously can't take it out at minus two, but if he can't knock me out, or if he misses, like oh, I'm about to, I'm about to do a calc real quick. Mega Aerodactyl. It just depends on how. I guess it also depends on how much damage Infernape can do to me. So Stone Edge is doing 59 to 70.2. So unless he gets a max roll here, he will not kill me. And I am doing 54 max with Thunderbolt. So I do have the option here. He may just roost though. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go for the, the Will-O-Wisp here. Um, I think that's probably my best. I'm just gonna go for it. Yeah, he roosts here. So that's really, really nice. We get the Will-O-Wisp off, we burn the Aerodactyl. That is fantastic. That is really, really good for us. So now I think I'm just going to hit Thunderbolt, honestly. He goes for the Stone Edge. We're going to eat that Charty Berry and live on 36%. Get that Thunderbolt off. Do a very large chunk of damage. The burn's going to bring him down a little bit. And I think I just sacked this off, to be honest. Now that this thing is burned, I can I can set up on it. I'm just going to keep hitting Thunderbolt until you kill me, man. I'm not... <laughs> Take me out. He misses the Stone Edge, so that's unfortunate for him. But it's really, really nice for us because now he pretty much has to roost here. Uh... And this is this is one of those games where he's kind of he's kind of playing with crits a little bit, you know. While we're going through this, I am just gonna go ahead and look up to see Cofagrigus. We're gonna look at this right here. So we're doing 42% with Shadow Ball, and I need to burn him real quick. And he is gonna be doing 21% max with Stone Edge. So I actually think that once he takes down this Rotom. We can just go straight for Cofagrius and, and just kind of go for game here. Um, he can he can use all the roosts that he wants. I really don't mind. I'm just going to sit here and keep doing Thunderbolt until he kills me. There we go. So now we are free to bring in Cofagrius. And I am going to go ahead and just set up the, the Trick Room. He's going to Toxic me. That's fine. I honestly don't need that many turns. Um, I'm fine with being toxic in this situation because at the very least, I'm going to be able to get off really nice damage on something. So I'm just going to go ahead here for the nasty plot because he is going to roost. And again, he's going to be able to live two hits, I think. But now that we're at plus two, we're in a really, really good position. So we are doing 83 max with, with Shadow Ball. So it's definitely a two hit KO. Um, ooh. And he gets the special defense drop, which is nice. That Stone Edge is doing nothing now that he's burnt. Um, we're going to be able to fire off another Shadow Ball. 
We do have the HP fighting for Empoleon, but I don't think we'll need it since we've already chipped him down. And honestly, uh, with the with the Hoopa and the Gliscor, I think we I think we could I think we have this one, dude. He pretty much just has to pick what he wants to what he wants to sack off here, and it is going to be the Infernape. I, he might have the Sucker Punch. I don't know if I don't know if Infernape gets Sucker Punch. If it does, that's obviously not ideal. But we can just go straight into Gliscor and start hitting Earthquake. Um, well, let me calc and see. Let me calc and see real quick how much this is going to do, because as you can see, he is at 89%. So Shadow Ball should kill, um, unless he had, unless Infernape gets Sucker Punch and he has it, that's gonna kill, and we are gonna die, and that's pretty much GG, I think. Um, let me check Empoleon's speed real quick, just to just to be sure. Obviously, don't want to throw away something crazy, and let me see what my Hoopa's speed is. Um, Okay, so I am actually slower than a min speed Empoleon, so I think Gliscor is probably my play here. Um, I mean, I don't think there's anything he can do with Empoleon to take me out, but obviously I just like to be I like to be sure. So I'm just gonna go Gliscor. I'm gonna hit Earthquake, and hopefully that'll be it, man. Hopefully that'll be it. He's at 47%. Now he could be Shaka, um, but yeah, he is. Oh, he's going to live on 8%. He's going to get the Ice Beam off. That is going to knock us out. So, that's fine, though. We're just going to go into Hoopa. I don't. I really don't think he can knock us out from full. Uh, we're just going to go for the Z-Move here because we got to end it in style. So, I honestly, I'm going to be very upset if he, ha if he has, like, Hidden Power Bug or something really, really weird on this Empoleon. But... I don't anticipate that being the case. Okay, we live the Aqua Jet. Shout out to our defensive investment. And we are going to knock him out, take our first win in the MPL. That's what I'm talking about, baby. That is dope. I'm really, really happy with that. Uh, very, very, very happy with that. That was a good game. That was a really, really close game. I think I, I think I played that very well. Definitely shout out to Tyler, my opponent. Uh, I'm, I'm very, very happy with that. Uh, this video is definitely going to be a little longer than most of them are, so I'm not sure how often I'll do live comps, but let me know if you guys like it down below, and I will see you guys next time. Peace.